Hello, hello. It's been an interesting couple of months in the world of Dead by Daylight, with the big shift in the game's meta with the 6.1.0 update, perk changes, and reworks. The second Resident Evil chapter bring in even more potential meta changes, and so much drama online. This brings us to this week's topic of discussion, which is the most entitled side in Dead by Daylight, survivors or killers? To explore this we're going to be discussing the us versus them mentality, with a focus on fundamental attribution error. Also going to be analysing the concept of entitlement and the Dunning-Kruger effect, along with the general reactions to the 6.1.0, 6.1.2 and 6.2.0 DBD updates as of late. Finishing with a discussion of what the potential problems are and the potential solutions. As a side note again, thank you everyone for the insane support as of late and if you do enjoy the content please do consider subscribing. Anyway, first I need to clarify two terms, survivor main and killer main. Survivor main often refers to a DVD player who predominantly plays the survivor role. They are characterised as not understanding what playing killer truly feels like and thus cannot comprehend their perspectives. Likewise, killer mains refer to a DVD player who predominantly plays the killer role and does not empathise with the survivor's perspectives especially solo queue players. Okay, so with that, let's start with some psychology, shall we? The us versus them mentality is dependent on the idea of the us being inclusive to each other and the them being excluded. It essentially builds on the idea of othering. What this means is the construction and identification of the self or in-group and the other or out-group in mutual, unequal opposition by attributing relative inferiority and or radical alienness to the other out-group. In terms of Dead by Daylight, there are two predominant groups among players, the killer mains and the survivor mains. A basic understanding of othering in this regard would be to devalue another person based on the role you perceive them to main. It's worth noting that not all players fit into one or the other category but often they are still characterised into one or the other by the player base. One way in which we likely fuel the us versus them mindset is how we identify ourselves and characterise others. Identity is an individual's or a group's self-perception, whereas characterisation is how an individual or group perceives another individual or group to be. More often than not, we see our own position on a particular topic as correct, and if anyone disagrees with that, they other themselves to us. This is what starts to ferment the us versus them mentality. This leads me to the fundamental attribution error. Attribution in this case relates to how we connect specific behaviours to an individual. These can be either dispositional or situational. Dispositional refers to an internal factor, it's just part of who that person is. Situational is an external factor, such as one's environment. To put it simply, if someone is rude to us in the street, it's how we attribute that to the person. Do we believe they are just a rude person in general? Dispositional? or perhaps consider they are having a bad day, situational. In 1967, Jones and Harris studied how we attribute behaviour to a person's actions. They found that we tend to assume people's behaviour reflects who they are as a person, dispositional attribution. We don't tend to suspect situational reasons. We do this regardless of if we know an individual has no choice in their stance on a topic. Even if we know someone is forced to take a position, we still make dispositional assessments of that person, even if we are aware of situational stimuli. Basically, we make snap judgments about a person based on their actions. In Dead by Daylight terms, if someone was to suggest that Pain Resonance and Dead Man Switch is a horribly boring combination for survivors to deal with, people are likely to label them as a survivor main. This immediately positions them as someone who does not understand the killer's position, and their arguments can be disregarded. Likewise, if a person suggests generator speed perks and add-ons should cap at a certain point, they might be marked as a killer main, who doesn't understand the struggle of playing survivor, and thusly will not appreciate their points of view either. Us versus them. But what fuels this? Why are people so keen to segregate themselves into two camps? It's something I mentioned in my last video very briefly, and it's why I wanted to discuss it in more detail now. But some content creators do fuel this behaviour. I'm not going to name names, you can likely think of many off the top of your head without my help, but I do want to suggest certain ways they might push their narratives and create this us versus them mentality, or at least strengthen it. Language is often strategically utilised to influence the attitudes and behaviours of one's audience. Benford and Snow discuss a variety of research which show how social movements identify the victims of a given injustice and amplify their victimisation. Both survivor and killer mains are very good at suggesting they are the weaker side in DBD. Implying behaviour interactive ignore their issues altogether, both are incredibly hard done by. 
We'll discuss this in a bit more detail later in the video, but my point here is previously we discussed how content creators have the potential to influence their audiences. I would suggest that by victimizing themselves, and in turn their communities, they push the us versus them mentality further, widening the divide between players. But how do they victimize themselves so heavily in a video game? Perhaps they're somewhat entitled. We'll use part of the Merriam-Webster definition of entitlement for our own use. The belief that one is deserving of, or entitled to certain privileges. In Dead by Daylight, this often takes the form of killers feeling like survivors should not use certain tools or perks to defend themselves. A great example of this is when a killer complains about prove thyself, or is clearly upset that they used head on. And survivors who get upset by particular perks on their end, Noed for example, or feel like they should be given the hatch just because they were the last survivor alive. You can often spot one of these in the wild by the instant DC when they are the first survivor to go down. The trouble is, I would suggest the most entitled players are often also the most polarizing in terms of pushing this us versus them narrative, which divides the player base further. People who accuse others of being entitled are perhaps the ones exhibiting the most entitled behaviors. Which leads me to the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is the psychological theory that individuals possess a cognitive bias where they overestimate their knowledge or competence in a specific field. Often those of less competence possessing an inflated opinion of their ability. A great paper by Dunning and Kruger named Unskilled and Unaware of It How Difficulties in Recognizing One's Own Incompetence Lead to Inflated Self-Assessments made interesting observations. They found that overestimation occurs in part because people who are unskilled in these domains suffer a dual burden. Not only do these people reach erroneous conclusions and make unfortunate choices, but their incompetence robs them of the metacognitive ability to realize it. If you're very, very stupid, how can you possibly realize that you're very, very stupid? You'd have to be relatively intelligent to realize how stupid you are. Basically, their information could be so limited on a subject that they lack an ability to reflect on possibly being wrong and struggle to accept fault. I would further suggest these individuals possess an entitled self-image as well, which further inflates an idea that they don't owe them an apology, etc. for negative behaviors. In another paper by Dunning, Heath and Souls, they suggest on average, people say that they are above average in skill, a conclusion that defies statistical possibility, overestimate the likelihood that they will engage in desirable behaviours, and reach judgments with too much confidence. So I would put forward that people can be quite unreliable at judging their own skill set. Any content creators who describe themselves as high MMR without irony, maybe you shouldn't trust their ability to judge their own skill. But overall, what I'm trying to say here is that entitlement is likely the product of an inflated opinion of one's competence. Players believe themselves to be above others in skill, making their opinions greater than the other players and thusly above criticism. We've likely all bumped into them. The players quickest to complain in a post-game are often the worst players among us, and sometimes it feels like many DBD users suffer from these delusions. So what are some examples of these entitled opinions? We have discussed 6.1.0 in some detail recently. It was a big deal. It was the largest DVD meta shift in recent history and one of the most killer-sided updates of all time. Ultimately, I'm still unconvinced it was all for the best, but the dust has settled and survivors have adapted shockingly well to the changes and killers have never had more fun facing up against solo queue. But what was maybe the most interesting outcome was the reaction from the community. DVD Twitter erupted into both anger and glee at the same time. After this though, two more updates caught my eye the 6.1.2 patch, and most recently the 6.2.0 Project W chapter, though most of the latest reactions are based on the PTB rather than the live servers. I've blurred Twitter handles because none of this is intended to belittle anyone's takes on DVD, or suggest anyone is particularly entitled, etc. This is just to better illustrate the emerging us versus them feud between survivors and killer players, and also many of these tweets are poking fun at some of the other people's reactions. So let's go through them a bit. First, there was the 6.1.0 update. This led to a variety of big changes to the game, including a complete rework of Dead Hard, a decisive strike nerf, generator aggression perk somewhat adjusted, 10 seconds added to the solo generator repair time, 10% increase of killer actions, a buff to bloodlust and a few other things here and there. It was undoubtedly a killer sided update, and a bit of a disaster for solo queue survivor players. Since this update, camping and tunneling have seen an increase, at least in my experience, likely because this playstyle is more effective than ever before especially when utilizing generator slowdown perks. Strong killers like Blight and Nurse have gotten stronger, but M1 killers have seen a resurgence too, which is great. It's nice to see Ghostface, Clown and Demogorgon running around again. I for one have been having a lot of fun playing Pig again. 
But reactions as you can see in the background were sort of all over the place, from users and creators alike. Mostly polite, but some overreactions here and there. Look, there's me being a whiny baby about it all. But generally speaking, many survivors were very upset about the changes to Dead Hard, which I think illustrates the entitlement of some, because Dead Hard desperately needed nerfing. Anyone who played Killer for a fair amount knew this. But likewise, Killer players sat in glee, sometimes suggesting survivors will just need to adapt, after they'd done nothing but complain update after update, again, maybe suggesting a feeling of entitlement. Then came a small patch in 6.1.2, which the main takeaway was a fresh rework to Thanatophobia, and a return to Dead Man Switch and Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, a combo which was previously removed from the meta. Some killers were immediately displeased about Thanatophobia being adjusted, but took no issue with Dead Man Switch and Pain Resonance returning, a combo widely unpopular among heavy survivor players. What happened to just adapting? And finally, there is the most recent update. The dust is still settling for this, but during the PTB we could see many complain about the new killer being weak. Apparently, it only takes one day to tell how bad a killer is. I remember people calling Blight weak too. Perks were already breaking the game before even being fully released, and just general overreactions. A rework to the widely unpopular RPD map, which still wasn't good enough whilst it was still being tested. And of course, people are still upset about Dead Hard. There is sometimes a sense that people rush to victimise their side in Dead by Daylight. Whenever new patch notes are released, people are always upset and then continue to complain about balance when these changes are attempting to do just that. What I'm trying to say here is we're all capable of coming across a little entitled, myself included. Perhaps we're being too quick to reach judgments with too much confidence, without giving ample time to analyse the changes. But why is this such a problem? I think at this point we can agree the us versus them mentality is a growing issue within the community, and I would propose that it is an issue which is exacerbated by larger content creators. Content creators, also known as social influencers, have the ability to impact an audience's opinions on a given topic. It stands to reason that when a social influencer propagates the idea that their side is a victim to the other side, they further this us versus them mentality, and often their rhetoric feels reminiscent to those fighting for a cause. This might be why so many rally behind one side or the other. Participation in social movements frequently involves enlargement of personal identity for participation and offers fulfillment and realisation of the self. I would suggest some creators treat the challenges they face as survivor or killer as equal to a social movement and rally their audience in a way that further pushes the division between players. And this division leads to a strong sense of community, but also breeds hostility between opposing communities. In my last video, I suggested content creators have both a positive and negative impact on the DBD community. The most damaging idea, I thought, being that one is not responsible for another's enjoyment of the game. But I think having made this video, I was wrong. The growing disdain between players is a problem, and I honestly believe it is a community-driven issue rather than a game design one. And like it or not, Portions of the community are influenced heavily by content creators. DBD is an asymmetrical game and will never truly be fair or balanced, but generally the game is actually pretty good in comparison to many others in the genre. But increasingly, people feel entitled to win and victimise themselves when they lose. Rather than discuss, individuals will ignore one's opinion based on the role they main or sometimes even the specific survivor or killer they choose to play. I've even had some of my videos receive comments suggesting I'm a survivor or killer main to completely disregard the referenced arguments I bring up. So are there any potential solutions to this growing issue? Honestly, I think the best defence against this issue is being able to reflect on oneself. We have established that generally, people have an inflated opinion of their abilities and knowledge on a topic. We are also very quick to judge people's actions dispositionally. With that knowledge, maybe prior to becoming hostile towards another person for playing a certain way, with certain perks, or with a certain killer, maybe we can start to consider why. Have they just been bullied by a swift and needed a win? Or has this survivor just been tunnelled over and over and now they're tryharding with meta perks because they're fed up of not getting to play at all? Or are we just misunderstanding the situation altogether? Sometimes a killer camps because they can see all of the survivors. Sometimes they tunnel because a survivor body blocks have off the record and now that's their best option. It's not always them being unfun. And perhaps most importantly, I think we should be cautious about those louder voices we listen to in the community. The high MMR gamers which are telling you that you have to play in a certain way to win, or who maybe other the opposing side in an aggressive fashion driving this us versus them mindset. I think some social influencers in the DBD community should maybe police their own rhetoric a bit more, 
Or perhaps it is up to the audience to be more critical of those voices when they are maybe being influenced in an unhealthy manner. I think it might be time to realise that we're the DBD community. Survivor or killer, we all love the same game. I see no benefit to dividing ourselves so needlessly. I have friends which prefer to play killer, and others that prefer to play survivor. It's not a big deal. Perhaps we all need to spend a little less time complaining about how the other side plays and be the change we want to see in the game. You're bored of getting tunnelled and camped? Maybe try playing killer and be the more fun killer you want to see in the game. Maybe you'll realise sometimes you have to camp and tunnel. Likewise, killer players who despise the way survivors play, walk a mile in their shoes, get Eerie 1 in solo queue, see how long you last without using any meta perks. It feels like there's a lack of empathy among the player base these days. And honestly, it's sad to see. So which side is more entitled? Both. Both are capable of victimising themselves and disregarding the opinions of others because they aren't on their team. I do want to say though, the DVD community is full of wonderful, positive players and creators as well, who push for unity rather than division. We maybe just have to start moving away from the particularly egregious voices and focus on enjoying the game for what it is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider leaving a like, comment or subscribing. How do you feel about the community? Do you think the us versus them mindset is a growing issue? Either way, I appreciate your time and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. See you later, mashed potato!